So while our cracks are looking pretty sweet, let's go ahead and add some more variation to kind of the slopingness of these rocks because we can see if we take a look more at a grazing angle, right? They're really all the same size. And, you know, unless you've manufactured it that way, you're not going to more organically find rocks out in the wild like that. So to start this off, again, I'm going to want to isolate each one of these rocks and we're going to be doing that using the flood fill. So I'll drag this out, add a flood fill node. And the flood fill actually gives us a pretty useful tool to add kind of angular variation to your geometry. And with this node, we're going to be able to select a flood fill to gradient node there. And this is going to give us a bunch of gradients for each one of these guys here. But the really cool thing is we can actually switch this angular variation and we're going to have just kind of random directions for these rocks to stick out of. We can also go ahead and just change the uniform uh, rotation there, but it's really whatever you want it to be. Now I'm going to keep angular variation at one because I want them to kind of all go in different directions. I also want to play around with some of the more uh, destruction of the edges and the cascading and all of that kind of effects while working on this gradient. So again, I'll add a slope blur grayscale. And we're going to get a little funky with our actual slope values here. So I'm going to use a Gaussian yet again, right? We're familiar with that. And instead of just using one kind of value, I want to break it up a little bit. So I'm going to duplicate this guy. And finally, I'm actually going to use a third Gaussian as our opacity. So now when I blend these two together, at different sizes, at different disorders, we're gonna be able to kind of get just kind of random soft Gaussian noise. So I'm going to bring the size to about something like, let's do 54, something really, really small, and just give it a random disorder. I'm gonna change this one to be something really, really big like 12, and again, just kind of a random spread there. Now I'm going to go ahead and plug this into our opacity, right? So that you can see we're getting larger scale information with some smaller scale. And I'm going to maybe add a histogram scan. With some contrast there, maybe just a little bit. We don't want it to be too sharp. And I'll make this just kind of random and actually maybe I'll make it maybe around 10-ish, something like that, right? So that we're going to get some kind of randomness like that. Now what do we can do in our slope blur here? Bring our samples right up. You can already kind of see, right, where the smaller areas are going to be, where the larger areas are going to be. Bring our intensity way down. And I'm going to switch the mode to be min. So that we're going to get some smaller areas, right? Some smaller kind of divots and all that stuff mixed in with some larger scale information. And this is all going to provide us with some slope so that we're, our rocks are going to have this kind of randomness to it. So with that all selected, I'm going to quickly just add a blend over here. Plug this guy in. And making sure this is all over top, I'll just plug that in there. And we can quickly just plug this back into our normal and our height. Right, so that we're going to get kind of random directions. Now that's really, really intense. And obviously, like everything, we're going to want to play around with it a little bit more. So for the blending mode, I'm going to want to select min darken, just so it's going to give us some sharper. Uh, fall off there, right? Some sharper cuts. And I'm going to change the opacity to be something like 0.5. So you can see that we're going to get some random slopes a little bit. Hopefully you can kind of see that on, uh, on the video there. And it's also going to give us some kind of cascading surface effects with kind of a sharp cut off there. 
And I'm going to quickly just go ahead and increase the tessellation factor there just so we can see it, right? Really nice sharp cutoff. And if I want to go ahead and maybe play around with you know, some of the disorder of some of those cuts, maybe I don't like how big the scale is so I can kind of bring it down a little bit. And we can even go ahead and play around with the intensity to cut away more or do something like 0.4 to cut away less. The next section we're gonna look at is developing some more peaks for these rocks to give it a little bit more uh, sharper features or sharper accents on some of the more taut faces of the rocks so that we're not just entirely smooth. So to start this off, we're gonna be using a cells one node. And actually we're gonna be using two of them. So I'll take this guy here and for variation, I'll just duplicate it. And like we had done for the cracks, I'm just going to use one as a little bit smaller scale information. We'll do about 20. Give it some disorder as well. And for this one here, I'm going to go ahead and make it a little bit larger. So we're going to do something kind of like 16. And again, some random disorder there. So I'll quickly go ahead, blend those together. And we're gonna to need to figure out a way that we can mask these off. Well, I don't wanna go ahead and create new nodes. So instead, I'm just going to use one we've already created right back here. And I'll just go ahead and plug that guy in. Now, if we take a look, right, we're gonna get some smaller nodes or some smaller cells there with some larger cells information. And so now that we've got this kind of initial surface information, let's go ahead and warp it so that we're not just getting these kind of straight values over top of our rocks. So I'll drag this out and add a directional warp. And for this one, I'm gonna use instead of a clouds two, a clouds one node. Again, just to continuously break uh, things up and vary them a little bit. So that we're gonna get some distortion like that. Now that's a little bit too uh, kind of intense there. So I think what I'm going to do is do something more around 4. Point, let's do about 4.15. So it's kind of wavy, kind of noisy, but it's not uh, too intense. I also want to add some more variation onto this, right, with some of our lines here. So for good measure, I'll drop a Gaussian noise with a slope blur grayscale. Crank up our samples, bring our intensity way down. Change the mode to min. And for our noise, I'm actually just going to leave the scale on 32, but just play around with the disorder. So that we kind of get these interesting looking, uh, almost like sharp, faceted kind of rocks almost, right? But instead, we're going to be using these to manipulate the surface of our rocks. So let's just take a look and see what that looks like right now. We'll go ahead and add a blend. And the blending mode that we're going to want to use for this particular node here is going to be divide, right? Because you can see that when we divide it, we're going to get kind of these little peak areas, which are going to be, if we take a look, right, almost inverted, the darker areas are going to be what the lighter areas are. And it's almost going to work kind of counter to how we would think our blending mode is going to work, or at least how we're used to with some of the more uh, standard blending modes. I'm just going to leave that plugged in for now so we can see what we're doing. However, I'm going to do a few more operations to make this look a little less uniform and a little bit more individualized for each rock. So one way we can add individuality is a way that we've already seen, and that's using a vector warp. So again, I'll go and add a vector warp grayscale node and plug this guy into there. And we're going to need, again, a grayscale or a gradient, sorry, vector map. I'm just going to quickly go ahead and control duplicate that guy. And I'm going to use the most updated version of our rocks here. Because if we take a look, right, 
we can see that this is now taking into consideration some of those uh, angles, those variation uh, angles that we created. And this is going to just, again, kind of propagate in our vector here. So if we take a look, right, rank this way, way, way down. And I'll also just bring this out for organization. We can see that we're going to get some more uh, unique, I'll say, kind of crevices or peaks or whatever you want to call them, really. Surface information, we'll say. So that's starting to look pretty sweet, right? A little bit more organic. I also want to play around with the curve of this to maybe sharpen some areas up. So I can go ahead and add a curve node and just kind of bend this down just a little bit right, to kind of sharpen things up. And finally, I'm going to add a levels node here just to crunch in our black output. Because you can see, right, our black outputs here are going to actually cause a peak for our values. And I don't want to have any kind of flat top values. So to remove the peaking, we can just really crunch in the black uh, output there. So we're going to get a lot of those really cool looking uh, faceted looks for our rock surfaces. And again, most of the work is really going to be done by our vector warp here and just adding some kind of distorted noise to it. So to round out our height map, I want to take a look at developing the earth that is going to be kind of underneath and in between these rocks. However, I'm not going to spend too much time taking a look at the height map for this because most of the detail is going to come from texturing the albedo map. So to start this off, I'm going to add a cells one node and I'm going to duplicate it again. And really, we're going to be pretty much doing the same exact thing that we did over here, just to create some kind of warpy, wavy surface information. So I'll go ahead and just quickly blend these two together. And I'll set this guy to be a scale of 22. And I'll set the bottom one here to be a scale of something like, let's do 30. I'm also going to use another Gaussian noise. And this time I'll just run it through a levels. Now again, it doesn't really matter if you use a histogram scan or a levels or whatever, as long as you're going to be able to get some kind of change or alteration to your histogram. So I'll bring this up a little bit. So we're going to get some larger areas. I might actually want to bring this, uh, let's bring the scale up to something like maybe 43 and play around with the disorder as well. Just that we're getting kind of randomness again. And from there, what I want to do is, again, play around with the waviness of it. So using our directional warp, I'll go ahead and, again, just use a Clouds 2. I really like how the Clouds 2 kind of uh, propagates our waviness here. And we can do something maybe like 15, give it some kind of random you know, random direction like that. And so I want to go ahead and blend this with our rocks just to see what it looks like, right? Because it's really difficult working uh, kind of in isolation without being able to view what's, you know, really happening in context with your other heights. So with this, I'm going to add a height blend. And again, just shift and click to steal that. Now, I actually want to put the rocks up on the top, right? Because we do technically have a top and a bottom. So if I plug that in, you can see the kind of height information we're going to get. Kind of looks like dirt a little bit, but there's still a little bit ways to go. Now, it's kind of, you know, almost entirely removed our rocks. So for our height offset, let's do something like point, let's see what point six looks like. And uh, maybe still not enough. So let's do 0.7. And that's starting to look much better. I'm also going to go ahead and change the contrast. We can see that right around kind of the rim of these rocks here 
there's almost this like cutout of where the rocks are. I just want it to go straight up onto the rock. And actually, even that maybe still looks a little bit. Let's do 0 0.75. All right, and that's, that's looking okay for now. I think uh, we'll leave it for there. So to add some surface information now to the dirt, which is, you know, looking really smooth, let's go ahead and I'm going to go and add a dirt one node. Right, we've seen this before, just a bunch of different uh, kind of noisy circles and blend this in. So when I plug this in, I'm going to want to use these values to subtract from our dirt. So I'll just go and subtract and I'll bring this right down to something like 0 0.0. Let's try 0 0.05. And uh, that's not too bad. I'll maybe bring the dirt scale up just to two, you know, a little bit, a little bit finer. And I'm also going to go ahead and slope blur this using a fractal sum base node. So again, fractal sum base is just a bunch of grayscale noise, but we actually have some parameters that we can play around with. So if, if we just take a look right up close here, actually, and I'll just bring the samples up and the intensity way down. I'm going to, with our fractal sum base here, bring our max level down. And you can see what that's going to do, right? Is it's basically just going to create larger information. So I'll bring that down to about point, uh, or sorry, just nine, not point nine, just nine. I'm also going to want to bring the roughness down a little bit, right? The roughness is just going to be kind of the overall uh, sharpness of it. So I'm going to do something like, we'll do point, point eight ish. Make it a little bit softer. And finally, the global opacity. So if I bring this up, kind of hard to see what it does here, but if I take a look at uh, other areas, right, we're not really getting that showing up. If I bring this down, right? So this is just kind of a way, if I take a look, to kind of almost remove this effect from certain areas. So I'll do 1.7-ish. And so that's looking okay, but I'm also going to want to go ahead and change in our slope blur here, just from blur to min, so that we're not getting that really, really harsh uh, value for it. I also don't really want that intensity, so maybe something like 0.2, just to kind of sharpen those areas up without taking over entirely. So if we take a look at our material, that's starting to look pretty sweet. And uh, I'd say that's a pretty good start to our height map. In this video, we took a look at completing the height map for the first part of our material, being our rocks as well as our dirt. And in the next video, we'll take a look at giving you some ideas on how you can go ahead and start designing some foliage to be used for this material.